And he said things which are impossible with man are possible with God. I want to use for a title to this morning's message, Restrictions Don't Stop God's Redemptions. Amen. I just want to tell somebody for the next couple of minutes that I have restrictions. Uh, don't stop God's redemption. You've been wondering, uh, hallelujah, about God moving in your life and the next breakthrough that he can bring to your life. Uh, but you've been limited in your resources. You've been limited. Uh, but God says, I am not limited. Uh, hallelujah. He's limitless. His power, hallelujah, will cause you to run through troops and leap over walls. Uh, when God wants to bless you, he knows uh, how to break through restrictions. Uh, God knows how to get the blessing right with your name on it. Uh, he knows how to get the blessing to you. Uh, the sovereignty of God will not let man's restrictions uh, block him from doing the exceedingly, uh, the abundantly, uh, above all that you're able to ask or think. And even though uh, we've been struggling and we've had some restrictions, uh, it does not stop God's redemption. Uh, tell somebody, God is going to bring you back. Uh, I don't care if his healing sickness is in your body. Uh, God is going to give you enough power and enough strength to redeem you, uh, to bring you back right to the place uh, that he has already promised for you. He's going to give you enough might. Uh, he's going to give you enough favor. He's going to give you enough anointing. Uh, he's going to give you enough grace uh, to be able to do what eyes haven't seen, uh, neither have ears heard, uh, neither have it entered into the heart of man, uh, the things that God has prepared for you. Uh, the Lord can bless you and promote you uh, even through restrictions. Uh, ask a man named Moses uh, who tried to convince God uh, that because his speech was a little slurish or a little slower, that it was too hard uh, to complete God's assignment. Uh, but God refused Moses' excuse because what? God has no restrictions. Uh, I don't care what you got to give to God uh, to tell him why you can't do uh, or why you can't accomplish the thing that God says you can do. Uh, God says, I'm limitless, baby. I got an errand that I prepared for you. Uh, I got a rod that I can put in your hand. Uh, I can do what I said I can do. Uh, tell somebody that God can do just what he said he can do. He would not receive Moses' excuse. God won't receive your excuse to make him exempt from executing in your life. He just needs to know if you got the delight and the desire to receive, he will not allow your restrictions to stop his redemption. God will move mountains to get to the children of God. He will break down enemies' territories and, and gates, hallelujah, to cause his blessings uh, to come to them that have been calling on his name, uh, that have been looking for a blessing, uh, that has been pressing their way uh, in spite of the issues. Uh, tell somebody, I'm here through my restrictions uh, because God didn't stop my redemption. God showed Moses, let me show you what I'm working with. Uh, can, can God to show you what he's working with? Uh, he showed Moses, let me put a rod in your hand. Uh, and the Bible says, now we know that Moses, uh, he was not very young in his age when he when God appeared to him in the burning bush uh, so that he can do uh, uh, the ministry that God had for him. Uh, so age is not a restriction. Uh, limited finances is not a restriction. Uh, hallelujah. A lack of skill is not a restriction uh, because the Bible says that the gifts and callings of God uh, are without a repentance. Uh, so God told Moses, I can show you what I'm working with. Uh, he took a rod in that same rod uh, that Moses had. Uh, God used it as a stick to walk Israel uh, out, hallelujah, of Egypt, even until their breakthrough and their promises. Uh, I'm trying to tell you, if you can get it real quickly, uh, I don't care what you got, uh, what little bit is in your hand. Uh, God can take what you got. Uh, he ain't asking what you don't have. Uh, he didn't ask you what you do have. Uh, he's just trying to get the redemption process to you. Uh, he can bless you. Uh, he can promote you uh, even through your restrictions. Uh, look at the woman of Zarephath. Uh, the Bible says in Elijah, uh, in 1 Kings, that Elijah brook had dried up in first Kings chapter 17 and the Lord had told him to arise and to go to Zarephath and there will be a widow woman there to sustain him. Elijah arises the Bible says and goes to the widow's house and says fetch me a little water and then he also tells her to get me a morsel of bread and she replies to Elijah in verse 12 she says the Lord liveth I have not 
a cake, but a handful, a, a meal in a barrel, and a little oil, and says, I'm gathering sticks right now at this moment uh, so that I can go and dress it uh, for me and my son uh, that we may eat and die. But Elijah says unto her, make me some cake first, uh, and your barrel will not run dry. So God was telling this woman of Zarephath, uh, even though you are a widow, uh, even your, though you have such little, uh, I still can make much uh, with the little in your hand. Uh, so you all have been blessed for too long. You got too much oil in your pot. Uh, so you may not be able to relate to me, uh, but I want to talk to somebody that knows what it's like uh, to just have a little bit, uh, just have just enough uh, to get you to the other side, uh, to have just enough uh, to make the ends meet. Uh, God says your restrictions uh, won't stop my redemption. Uh, if you will give me just what you got, uh, I can multiply the favor. I can multiply the grace. Uh, I can multiply with the abundance. Uh, but this woman of God says, I need your obedience. Uh, see, the Bible says that when Elijah came to her uh, and he asked her to feed him first, uh, she did not hesitate. Uh, and I'm telling somebody, uh, when you feed the man of God first, uh, God won't hesitate uh, to bless your house. Uh, he won't hesitate uh, to bless your family. Uh, he won't hesitate uh, to bless your business. Uh, he won't hesitate uh, to bless your body. Uh, what you don't have uh, is not a restriction from God. Uh, God says, I know you thought uh, that your situation was about to die. Uh, I know you thought uh, that the dream was over. Uh, I know you thought uh, that you were coming to the end of your barrel. Uh, but God says, you see a little bit, uh, but I'm going to pour in on your little bit. Uh, I'm going to pour in. Uh, tell somebody, God, pour in on my little bit. Uh, he redeemed this widow woman. Uh, and sometimes we think that we need to offer God so much uh, just for him to give us so much back. Uh, but I brought God just a little bit uh, and I reap more on the back end uh, than what I could afford to give on the front end. Uh, if you can trust him in the middle of it, uh, if you can trust him in the beginning of it, uh, tell somebody, give him your restrictions so that he can, amen, show you how he can redeem you. Restricted from the opportunity. The enemy makes us feel like we've been restricted from the opportunity of all that God has for us and the best things that God can give us. Hallelujah, because he shows us our restrictions. But tell somebody, if you can tell God, uh, you can do more with my restrictions. Uh, because the Bible says that that which is impossible uh, with man, uh, hallelujah, is, um, is not possible. It's possible with God, uh, that which is impossible with man. Uh, and we like to think that man can do what God can do. Uh, but tell somebody, God knows how to present himself in such a way uh, to show you, hallelujah, that what I'm getting ready to do, uh, you're going to need more uh, than and a physical man. Uh, see, we are a natural people, but God is a supernatural God. Uh, he's omnipotent. Uh, he's omnipresent. Uh, he is able to do the exceedingly uh, and the abundantly uh, above all that we're able to ask or think. Uh, never restrict God's hand uh, because you have a restricted situation. Uh, because God is bigger than your restrictions. Uh, he's bigger than your limited possibilities. Uh, he's bigger than the folk that are around us. Uh, he's bigger than the things that are in front of us uh, tell somebody your God is big uh, do we call him Alpha and Omega uh, that means he was before you and he is after you uh, he's the beginning and the end uh, he is in the front and he's in the back uh, and he is all in the middle of it restriction from opportunities of good things and we, be, we restrict ourselves because we keep playing around with toxic things and so the toxicity of the things that are around us makes us feel like God is restricted from blessing us and getting the blessing to us. But this woman says, I'm going to obey God with all that I have. Deuteronomy 28 and 11 says, And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. Jesus, the Bible tells us, went about his life in ministry showing us 
there are many examples through miracles, through healings, uh, and through deliverance that what was impossible with man uh, uh, was possible with God. Uh, can I show you some things how he showed us? Uh, what looked like a dead thing uh, became a living thing. Uh, the Bible says in John chapter 11 uh, that Lazarus was a dead thing. Uh, we know the story. Uh, he looked dead. Uh, he smelled dead. Uh, they told him, they told Jesus he's been dead for three days, uh, but God would take a dead thing uh, and he would breathe on that thing uh, and he would make it a living thing. Uh, you don't have any restrictions uh, when it comes to the glory of God. God says you out specialize uh, in that which is dead. Uh, the Bible says in John chapter 11, uh, how be it Jesus spake of his death, uh, but they thought that they had spoken of his rest and sleep. Uh, then said Jesus unto them plainly, uh, Lazarus is dead. Uh, hallelujah. Sometimes you think what you're going through is dead. Uh, you think that the family is dead. Uh, you think that there is no resurrection is dead. Uh, but I'm telling you, there are no restrictions in God. Uh, it may be dead. Uh, it might have been buried, uh, but 30 years. It might have been in the ground for three days. But Jesus said, though they slay me, oh, Job said, though they slay me, yet will I trust him. It may be dead. But Jesus said, give me three days. Tell somebody, give me three days. What looked like a dead thing. God is going to make it a living thing. That dream you had, that old family you had, it looked like a dead thing. But watch God make it a living thing. Jesus told them in verse Verse 15, uh, he says, I'm glad for your sakes uh, that I was not there to the intent ye may believe. Uh, see, sometimes God has to wait for stuff to die and show up uh, so that he can make a believer out of you. Uh, because if he didn't show up on the front, on the back end, uh, they would have thought, amen, that man's possibility uh, got Lazarus to wake up. Uh, but Jesus says, I'm going to come in uh, when there is nothing else left. Uh, I'm going to come in uh, just when it looks like all hope is gone. Uh, I'm going to come in when you ain't got a nickel to rub against the dime. I'ma come in when the enemy is all on your back. I'ma come in when it look like the drugs are about to take your family out. Jesus says, I'ma come in on the dead thing and I'ma breathe on that thing because there are no restrictions in the glory of God. God has no restrictions to what he can do. God has no restrictions of how he can do it. God has no restrictions of the way he can do it. Uh, he will move mountains. Uh, he will move people. Uh, he will move obstacles. Uh, tell somebody God is going to get a blessing to you uh, if you got room to receive it. Uh, I know that God is able. Uh, he's, got, he's able. Tell somebody he's able. He showed us through what looked like a dead thing can become a living thing. Mary and Martha said, Jesus, you should have been here because my brother it's already dead. There are no restrictions. That thing could have been dead. But God is able to redeem it. Secondly, God showed us through what was a sleeping thing became an awoke thing. And some of the stuff we have uh, that God has given us is not dead, uh, but we've been sleeping on it. Uh, that idea, uh, that purpose, uh, the plan of God that he gave us, the dream, uh, the idea. Some of you all are so many entrepreneurs that haven't even given birth uh, to the gifts of God that are on the inside of you. Uh, and it is not dead, uh, but you've been sleeping on it. Uh, you ain't put it on paper. It's just sleep. Uh, you had a thought in your head, uh, but you ain't wrote the vision down yet. Uh, that thing is just sleeping her uh, and God is saying I'm about to remove uh, the restrictions uh, in the book of Luke the 8th chapter the Bible talks about how that this synagogue ruler came and said Jesus uh, my daughter is dead uh, Jesus says she is not dead uh, she sleep uh, but when Jesus says she was sleep and not dead uh, the Bible says that there was some that came uh, and they laughed uh, and Jesus then puts them out uh, he puts them out of the room uh, so that he can perform the miracle so that he can wait Wake up this daughter. I'm telling somebody, God won't even let the people that don't want to see your blessings come to pass. He won't let your enemies, he won't let your haters see, uh, not see the miracles of God. God won't even let people restrict his redemption. He will break, he will put people out. He will move them out the way to why somebody says he's trying to wake something up in you. He's trying to wake up the gift.
gift and a calling uh, that's on the inside of you. Uh, so even if it's sleep, uh, it ain't gone nowhere uh, because the Bible says, uh, hallelujah. You see, sometimes uh, we have a lot of stuff. Uh, we have a lot of people that's not in agreement with your next move from God. Uh, so God has to tell them, uh, get out the room. Uh, get out of the territory. Uh, God has to speak to the spirits of those uh, that are not in compliance uh, with what God is trying to awake on the inside of you. Uh, and you thought uh, that you were limited uh, by your own capabilities. Uh, but it was the people uh, that were around you uh, that did not believe uh, in the miracle that God had for you. Somebody going to get that maybe on the way home. But if you would talk to God uh, and ask him to open up your eyes uh, and to show you your surroundings uh, and to reveal, hallelujah, what eyes haven't seen uh, and what neither have ears heard, uh, you've been restricted uh, by people that don't believe. Uh, and unbelief is the restriction uh, that tries to hinder your blessings. Uh, but God says, I can move even through the power of unbelief uh, because the Bible says, uh, shall your unbelief uh, make the word of God of none effect? Uh, I believe it was Minister Williams that said earlier, what can well, not only what can separate us, uh, but what shall disannul uh, the purposes of God? Uh, he's going to make it happen. Uh, he's going to get his will done. Uh, he's going to give birth. Uh, he's going to bring a blessing. Uh, he's going to deliver the favor. Uh, he's going to give you the healing. Uh, I don't care what's been sleeping around you. Uh, God is going to awake that thing uh, because he won't even let people uh, restrict his redemption. Uh, tell somebody it's just the unbelief. Uh, you weren't crazy. Hallelujah. You weren't sick. Uh, it wasn't your limited possibilities. Uh, it was just those that didn't believe. Uh, and you got to speak to those uh, that do not believe. Uh, if they don't believe uh, and what you praying to God for, uh, shake the dust from your feet. Uh, come hell or high water. God's will is going to be done. His way is going to be done. God, give me some power so I can preach this word like I feel it. Uh, God won't let people restrict his redemption. We got too much unbelief around us. You got too many people that's talking you out of your blessings. Too many people that's not in belief with what God has for your life. Restrictions. But God says, I'm going to redeem you even through their restrictions. This is why the enemy looks so foolish when he try to block your blessings uh, by trying to cause distractions uh, and restrictions in front of you like God is not powerful enough uh, to move through the restrictions. Uh, tell somebody the devil is a liar. Uh, God is going to get through that restriction. Uh, and the next way he moved through the restrictions, uh, he took an unclean thing uh, and he made it a clean thing. Uh, oh God, because the Bible says uh, that we were all filthy rags, wretched, undone. Uh, we were all y'all unclean. Uh, but what we couldn't do every day for ourselves, uh, Jesus did it one day on the cross. Uh, he says, Father, uh, I'll take upon myself uh, all of their yoke, uh, all of their burdens, uh, and what they can't do, uh, what they are incapable of doing. Uh, I'm going to give them the capacity. Uh, I'm going to give them an anointing. Uh, I'm going to give them a power. Uh, I'm going to give them the presence of God uh, to make you run through troops uh, and make you leap over walls. Uh, I want to talk to somebody that need God to take you higher. We are a natural people, but God is a supernatural God. He's omnipresent. He's everywhere at the same time. Res resumes re may restrict you, but the gift of the Spirit will stretch you. This is why so many of you are so successful in this ministry. Because your gift, your gift, the Bible says, will make room for you. And it will bring you before great men. It's one thing to have a job, but it's another thing to operate in your gift. You are missing the next blessing uh, just by not being in your gift. When you operate in your gift, church, uh, you are operating in God's anointing over your life. Uh, and that becomes limitless. Uh, why? Because God uses your gift uh, to break off restrictions. Uh, and the reason is because when you are in the gift of God, uh, you are in, hallelujah, not just in the ministry of God, uh, but you are in the purpose of God. Uh, you are in the plan of God. Uh, and it's the very thing 
that God uses uh, to bring you blessings to your life on earth. Uh, so the minute, the thing that some of you are missing, uh, you are just not operating in your gift. Uh, you can use your gift on your job. Uh, hallelujah. You can use your gift in the church. Uh, you can use your gift in the community. Uh, God will show you uh, that there are no restrictions uh, because the gifts from above, uh, gifts comes from above. Uh, and he gives us this treasure in earthen vessels uh, that the excellency of God uh, may be of him and not of us. Uh, and he will use that thing uh, to break off restrictions. Uh, this is why the Bible says uh, there is your gift uh, that makes room for you uh, and brings you before great men uh, because God will walk you through some doors uh, with your gift and with your calling uh, and you don't know what to do uh, when you get in the room uh, but your gift will make room. Uh, it will make you speak to leaders and executives uh, and CEOs and COOs uh, and God will put an anointing on your lips. Uh, he will give you the word in your heart. Uh, matter of fact, he said, I'm the word behind thee. Uh, he told the disciples to take no thought uh, for your life or what it is for the, what it will be for tomorrow because he will give you what you need. Uh, like he told the disciples, uh, he will give you what you need uh, in the moment that you need it. Uh, that's why fear has no opportunity uh, against the faith, uh, hallelujah, and the gifts of God uh, because when you're walking in your gifts, uh, you don't have any fear uh, because you're walking in the thing uh, that God has created on the inside of you uh, and what God has for you, uh, it is for you. Uh, tell somebody your gift will make room for you. Uh, it will break off restrictions. Uh, I can't tell you how many doors uh, God has allowed me to go through, uh, how many positions I've allowed to get, uh, not because of my skill, uh, not because of my knowledge, uh, but it was because my gift uh, had begun to make room for me. Uh, tell somebody, let your gift make room. Restrictions don't stop God redemptions. Not only will he use your gift, but God will use his grace. God will use his grace to break off restrictions. See, sin tries to restrict us. Sin tries to captivate us. Sin tries to hold us bondage and bound. But what he did on the cross allowed the grace of God to overcome the sin that we can become get in to break off the restriction. Tell somebody he used his grace to break off restriction because one thing about it is sin will restrict us. If it wasn't for the grace of God it will restrict you from getting the, ex, uh, the exceptional excellent uh, favor from God because the Bible says that no good thing will he withhold from them that walk it uprightly before you. God will use his grace church to break off restrictions Tell somebody all you need to do uh, is just go before the Lord, go before the King. Uh, the Bible says, hallelujah, to come boldly before the throne of grace uh, that you may obtain mercy. Uh, you are just one prayer away, hallelujah, from breaking every gate, every, every fence, uh, every hedge uh, that the enemy has tried to use uh, to block your blessing, uh, to block your deliverance. Uh, God has grace uh, to break off the restrictions uh, and God will use your go tell somebody I got to get up and I got to go uh, to break off your restrictions uh, sight will tell you uh, that it is impossible uh, hallelujah it's impossible for me to build this business uh, with all of these bills in front of my face uh, uh, a sickness in my body will tell me uh, that it's impossible uh, hallelujah for me to get up uh, and go uh, but tell somebody you'll go uh, if you can just get up uh, and walk by faith uh, and not by sight uh, sight will tell you uh, that this fool ain't ever gonna change uh, but God will break the restrictions uh, and if you will go in Jesus uh, come hell or high water uh, if you will go when people won't go with you uh, if you will go when the resources are not following you uh, if you can go in the name of the Lord uh, David was disqualified uh, he didn't even have the right armor uh, but when he stood before Saul's enemies uh, when he stood before the Philistines uh, he told the enemy I'm not coming to you uh, fully dressed uh, but I'm coming in the name of the Lord uh, and sometimes uh, it's just gonna be the power of your favor uh, that's gonna break off the restrictions uh, you ain't got nothing else uh, you ain't got nothing else to give uh, you ain't got nothing else to lose uh, all I got uh, is the name of the Lord uh, I'm not qualified enough uh, ain't enough money in my bank account uh, my neighborhood is the wrong zip code uh, I'm full of restrictions
instructions. But God says, I can redeem you even through those restrictions. If you can have some get up, if you can go up, tell somebody God will break all of the restrictions. The enemy try to use you to sit right there and he will use your stagnant self to make you restricted. But if you can break the restrictions by saying I'm a go God, if I have to go all by myself, I believe you, oh God, to do what you said you'll do. I believe you. See, your belief is a go system that breaks off the restrictions. Sometimes we're sitting there because we do not believe. But if you can believe enough, it will inspire you enough to get up and do something about your situation. See, unbelief can try to be a restriction. But again, shall your unbelief make the word of God of none effect? Pharaoh didn't want to let Israel go. They had some restrictions. But the Bible says that they were a promised chosen people that God had called to make it to the promised land. And even though Moses couldn't get them there, the Bible says that he raised up a Joshua, but Pharaoh was still in the camp. So even though Pharaoh was a restriction, I'm trying to tell somebody that's on a job, hallelujah, you got uh, supervisors that are restricting you uh, from going higher in the Lord. If men blocked it, God can understand stop it. Uh, any, I don't care what comes up against you. Uh, is there anything uh, too hard for God? Uh, tell somebody there is nothing too hard for God. Uh, for the Bible says things which are impossible with man are possible with God. We got to take your eyes off the people, off men. Take your eyes off of what you can do and put your eyes on what God is capable of, of doing. This is when you break the restrictions. Sometimes you just going to have to pray, hallelujah, until heaven gets the news. Prayer can break the restrictions, y'all. Your praise can break the restrictions. The Bible says that the, the uh, Judah walked around Jericho's wall because they had a devil that was around them that was trying to keep them from being free. But they walked around the wall until every uh, wall came down. Tell somebody you can break the restriction. Just simply with a praise with the little breath I got left can I give God some praise because when you praise the Lord when you give him the glory that's due unto his name not only will God sit with you not only will God rest with you but he will break the restrictions that say you can't praise God see I may be sick in my body but my praise will reach beyond my sickness and I'll be like David and I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually turn me up in the mic say because I feel like stomping on the devil's head you am finna break some restrictions because the devil is a liar you've been living it for too long God has too much for the body of Christ and you've been restricted because your mind and told you hallelujah that if God ain't did it yet he will not do it but the devil is a liar you better praise hallelujah until every wall come down tell somebody I will praise my way through her I will pray my way through her and the will of God has got to come to her because God will redeem you over the restrictions don't let your resume don't let what you think you got, don't let what you think you may need restrict you from being redeemed from God. Do you know what redemption mean? Hallelujah. Redemption says that God has brought you back. There is nothing more that we can pay for it except for the sacrifice of our servitude unto him. Jesus came 42 generations. He broke the restrictions from hell's table. He took the keys from the kingdom. He says, not my will, but thine will be done. He took the limits off of what was limited for you. And he says, I'm coming back for a church without a spot or a blemish. I'm coming for those that I've called. I'm coming for those that I've chosen. I'm coming for the guilt that's on the inside of you. I'm coming to bring my ministry into mission in the earth. Come on, give the Lord a victory hand clap of praise.